All right, welcome everyone back to Lugnut TV here on YouTube for the podcast session. Another one, yes indeed. Glad we could steal steal you away from your private lives for uh, listening in. Uh, as always, I'm joined here by Katie. Uh, say hi there. Hi, Katie. Yep, there she goes with that. But uh, you know, another week down here in Loose Lugnuts. We had the special event stuff uh, over there with a. Uh, Ronald Klein running the events um, this past weekend. Uh, got to see some great racing. Chris Voiles uh, with a win on Saturday, and then Justin Michael with a win on Sunday. So congrats to those two drivers out there for doing their thing and uh, coming out. I'm glad everyone that could attend attended, and it was a pretty decent show out there. So congrats to all y'all on that, and we move into the week, and we'll start first off here with uh you know the super late models asphalt series on the short tracks uh kevin winter doing a good job admin in that a little bit frustrating katie i know you've been up in the booth for it uh amount of cautions uh what's going on with that i think it's just these guys getting used to these short tracks i mean loose lug nuts has been big into the cup car the truck the xfinity and you're putting a lot of these guys on a smaller surface still with the same car so yeah we're seeing a lot of cautions next week we go to south boston and from the words of kevin winter this should be a lot better showing and a whole lot more fun to race yeah south boston is at least two lanes now you may not get two lane racing however uh with, with the tires and whatnot and the super late model early on you can go door to door for a little bit or pro possibly three different grooves in that track Getting through turns three and four is key. Obviously, getting off of turn two with enough uh, speed mo momentum there. But like you said, the the short tracks, it's all about you know how you interact with uh, one another. Uh, you know, obviously, it's like Martinsville every week for the Cup Series. You, you got to watch the guy in front of you where he breaks. You cannot break at the same point as the guy in front of you because he's already slowing down. If you're trying to break at that spot where he's at, he's already slowed down. You're way over the line. It's just, it's frustrating. Loose lug nuts guys have not been back on the short tracks in quite a bit. You know, a lot of our uh, regulars from back in that day uh, aren't racing with us at the moment. So, a uh, new group of guys running around, but still good showings, good car count, I, I think, uh, there, Katie. They have, and, you know, Kevin Winter is doing a fantastic job running this. He's sitting second in our points right behind Randy arms. And you do have Jeff Merck sitting right back there in third. Yeah, unfortunately, I do not know if this will go down in the loose lug nuts history book or whatnot. I believe our uh, leader, John Edrick, uh, wanted to see some, you know, participation out of the participations there. Uh, and I believe Kevin Winter's going to, Try and get it back going every Tuesday come the winter season uh, coming up. And uh, that that's a good bit of talking about there. But, uh, you know, before we skip straight over what happened uh, last night, being this uh, Friday afternoon that I'm talking of, uh, we'll, we'll, let's, let's talk about, uh, you know, Wednesday. I, I know you did some announcing there with the Misfits. I did. We had a phenomenal turnout again for the UMP Modifieds and, you know, it never ceases to amaze me. Some of the names we see showing up, if, like I said, if they don't have a pro card, they're at least running in a pro series. Yeah, that, that's for sure. And, you know, one day, uh, maybe very close to the future, uh, when we've developed, uh, the, the dirt side well enough, uh, and we split it into its own league, not that lug nuts is splitting, but just so people can have correct numbers and we don't got to worry about that. By the way, guys, if you're listening to this and you haven't got on the Facebook page with the numbers and all that, if I don't know you personally and you're not a legacy guy, uh, you, you need to let me know about your number, your your racing team if you want to, your, um, your sponsors. Don't do what some of those dirt guys did, like listed 12 sponsors. I, I'm not going to... I'm not interviewing you. I, I just want your main sponsor on the hood, and <laughs> that 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 was fun. So uh, I got the spreadsheet up. We like to see who's racing what. If you can uh, commit saying like I'm definitely gonna race the trucks, or I'm definitely gonna race the dirt. Let me know. That, that's cool. Got that. But you know, Katie, uh, always uh, with a pit pass there. 
Uh, let's first talk about the the write up you did on Jeff Merck. How, tell us about the story uh, of Jeff Merck uh, real quickly. Well, if you didn't get a chance to read it, um, basically one of the first people Top came in contact with when he started Loose Lug Nuts, he, you know, kind of came out and to put it blunt said, "Oh shit, this guy's fast." And he said, you know, that's what I want to run like. And it was the same person who reached out and said, hey, look, if you need any help with anything, let me know. Well, it ended up being Jeff Merck. Well, kind of dove a little deeper, asked him, you know, the history of why he was the number six. And apparently he's always been a Mark Martin fan and told us, you know, by day he's an HVAC man. He is ex-military, disabled veteran, Army, Navy, um... But come Thursday, Saturday, Sunday night, he is strapped in a race car for loose lug nuts and, you know, came out with a championship finish last year. So it was interesting to learn, you know, his history in iRacing. He's never raced before. So he, you know, this is the cl as close as it's going to get. And he said, you know, he's met some awesome people, but he's just at home here at lug nuts. And that's the ultimate goal. You know, not everyone's a perfect fit for lug nuts. I, you'll hear me say that from time to time on, you know, announcing. But, you know, if you find your fit here, uh, you, you normally fit well, and Jeff Merck does. Uh, like like you said, back-to-back -back champion uh, before the summer. He was the uh, fall-winter season champion in the trucks and Xfinity. And it, it was just amazing the type of run he had. Uh, going into that uh, playoff session, down to the Final Four. I know you covered that, his last race uh, there at Homestead. He had to win it to win it at Homestead there. And he beat out Rob Haynes. He beat out people like Wes Holland, Ronald Klein uh, during that uh, last winter season. So Jeff Merck really trying to go back to it. Kyle Chadwick himself did the same doubling up. Uh, looks like the, the driver's type vehicles the trucks and xfinity uh being what you could somewhat double up on as champion and i know that saves uh john hedrick there at over the top paints and designs a little bit of a room and you know making some of uh, those die cast cars which are the coolest damn trophies out there anywhere on i racing i would contemplate other than you know maybe winning a hundred thousand dollars for you know peak antifreeze yeah, that'd be a tough toss-up. And I mean, hey, I'll be greedy and say I'd take both. Yeah, I mean, heck, if Peak Antifreeze ever contacted John Hedrick, I think uh, it'd be kind of cool because, like I said, you can't find the trophy anywhere else. But speaking of fall, winter, or I should say fall right now, uh, in perspective of the type of season we're running, we're running a preseason now for the Trucks Xfinity and Cup. Um it's going to go as well as it did. Short track week this week at, I believe it's Milwaukee or New Hampshire. One of the two short tracks, flat tracks, and uh, maybe I should be a little bit more involved knowing the name. But still, it's all about, you know, we're still signing people up. Uh, people are finding loose lug nuts every which way through, you know, ASN, through what Katie and Matt do in other leagues. And they're, they're coming over here to loose lug nuts and trying to race. And sometimes it's just, you know... You, you see a steady league after five years with the same car count, 20 plus, and, and that's what you want to run. I do know Jeff's, I mean, that uh, John started a new Facebook page this week for lug nuts going into this. Um, new Hampshire was the first stop. Last night, the trucks ran there. Kevin Winter ended up taking the win last night. Got to take a second to brag because, you know, my man came in second, zero incident points, and third was Brian Bazell. Yeah, and that's a, no easy task last night because the, the cautions that were on the super late model asphalt have, you know, I wouldn't say transferred over, but it is a short track. However, the, I, I will say people weren't too patient. I saw a, a rookie out there with 24 incidents. I got to bump those numbers down um, on that end. Uh, I saw a couple guys out there that are full-time guys here at Lug Nuts with huge amounts of incidents above 12. And that's pushing the limit because I'm pretty sure we'll stick to the incident cap of 1516 on our main nights there. And those will end up in DQs in the future. So you got to watch that, drivers. 
But, you know, it's a good show and good turnout. It is preseason. Don't get too involved into it. Uh, just go out there and put on your best show possible. Winning's cool. But like you said, if you second place, zero incidents, that's the type of running we want to see. Well, Ron told us last week, you know, this whole preseason is based on, you know, racecraft etiquette. How dedicated are you going to be to loose lug nuts? Are you going to have respect for everybody? You know, are you going to... I can't say race clean, but are you going to race cautiously, get aggressive when you need to, but not overly aggressive? I mean, this is kind of just giving us an idea of what to look into the fall and winter season with, with some of these new coming drivers. And that, that schedule's bound to be released soon, maybe this week or next week, uh, depending on John's pleasure. I, I know they're still working out dates for Thanksgiving uh, that gap and Halloween, probably there's going to be a, a gap in that and Christmas, so forth, stuff like that. And any other major holiday that falls in there, uh, we will race President's Day. Unfortunately, we're not taking time off for that. We're not the government. So uh, we'll, we'll any major holiday out there, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll tend to try to skip over, put a special event in if you're able to race those. Those are also pretty cool. John may or may not, I don't want to put my foot in my, in my mouth this time, but uh, normally he does try to t uh, take a uh, trophy into those type of races because those are pretty big races and people do prepare for them. So we, we still got New Hampshire uh, on Saturday and Sunday. Get out there, see what you can. Xfinity car, I want to point out that real quick. We've got a new update here on new build, so to say. Um, not sure if what I've seen is true or not out there on some of the YouTube stuff, but uh, new Xfinity cars, basically you got to get them, got to get at least one and download the, uh, the stats for the others. That way you can see them on track, obviously. So get in there. Hopefully you get some type of compensation for it. I got $5 each because I've had the cars forever. Um, it, it, it's something that we're going to have to deal with and, you know, if you just got them, I think you get full market value for it. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. Hopefully people got better money than I did, $15, and they're already changing them up after two years. Whatever. It adds an extra car for John to paint. That's the way I put it today. Uh, beyond that. So I have fun with that. Go out there, do your best at New Hampshire in those two vehicles. However, it is Friday night, Katie. We are on dirt here tonight uh, at Eldora. That we are, and I can only hope that we see some of the names that we have seen in the previous weeks. This also is the World 100 week down at Eldora, so, you know, I'm still hoping we get a decent car count with, you know, as big of a race that is actually going on there tonight. Yeah, I mean, tons of people are going to be watching the internet broadcast, and also I think uh, MSNBC or I uh, forget what they call themselves now, Fox Sports 1 or who, whoever covers it. But yeah, Tony Stewart's got to be happy. He's got the eyes of the racing world on top of his track tonight. Absolutely. All right, so, you know, Super late models on dirt tonight. Ho hoping for good car count broadcasted by ASA. And obviously when you're listening to this, this will probably be past. Uh, continuing in the tradition, I think we've seen a new winner each week, Katie, right? We have. Last week we had Evan C. bring home the win at Charlotte. Um, Jeremy Capron, you know, once again finished third the first week. Second the, the second week finished First, our third week, he is sitting atop our points over our very own Brandon Thornhill. And, you know, if we continue to see names like Cardwell, Capron, Card, Howard, you know, these big guys like this, it's it's putting on a show for the viewers, definitely. Yep, heat racing, all that involved, um, mains if need to. Uh, I think uh, everyone made the main last week, or did you have to cut a few drivers? I believe everybody made it last week. So I, I believe Brandon Thornhill's been making the rooms to where the, the A main is 26 drivers. For a short track, dirt, and that's pretty good shown in my book, uh, especially splitting up it's about four heat races and then, you know, using the uh, 
B and C mains to uh, split the, the back end of the field into what it needs to be. So come out, enjoy some dirt action tonight on ASN, obviously, when you're listening to this. Check into it next time on Fridays. Same racing time as always here at Loose Lug Nuts. So, you know, last week, Katie, we uh, we struck up a conversation with Ron before, uh, you know, getting recording. And I was like, all right, we, we got to stop this because this is too good not to talk about. A, because Katie is a female, uh, if we haven't all guessed that by now. Um, and also, I, it's a big thing out there in the world because, you know, female into the sport of NASCAR at the top level being NASCAR, in my opinion. Uh, that's what NASCAR has been pushing for to get that viewership, to get that, you know, people being there. It, we just got to provide the opportunities for, you know, women to get into the sport. Danica was the last one unsuccessfully. I, I don't know how you would rate her, Katie. I think Danica did her job when it came to NASCAR. I mean, she brought the woman aspect to it. She brought a big name to it, but she went out at the right time. Let's just put it that way. She was also rushed through uh, uh, on a marketing scale wise. Uh, she did not have the, the best transfer from ending. Uh, Juan Pablo Montoya, the same thing, not, and I'm comparing maybe apples to oranges on drivings, but coming from Indy may be a little bit better sometimes, but it, it's, it's still difficult and uh, it's hard to adjust. Uh, it can ruin some drivers' careers too uh, out there. And it's incredibly difficult no matter which level or which division you're at. But Danica was obviously rushed through, ran, didn't do any K&N, straight to Arca, uh, broke those cars. I uh, think she did some Xfinity for two seasons and then was in a full-time cup ride. Uh, not the usual, you know, marking up the board that you'd normally go through. Yeah, I mean, we're learning with some of these new people. I mean, you've got to take the patience and the, you know, have, well, have the patience and take the time to work your way through these series. I mean, that's baptism by fire, in my opinion. I mean, you just throw them in there amongst, you know, the Kyle Bushes, the Kurt Bushes. Yeah, they're going to get run over. And no, they're not going to have the name or the sponsorship. So if they're work, they work, they work their way all the way from the bottom and then work themselves all the way up. I think they could definitely be a big thing. Yeah, and, you know, uh, the the two big names out there, at least on the American side, I know there's F2, F3 drivers, female-wise, ranging from uh, early teens all the way to their mid-30s right now that are exceptional drivers in their own right over there on the European stage uh, that could have a possibility of moving over to NASCAR, uh, maybe. But we'll keep the topic on to the, the two main ones here, and that is Haley Deegan and Natalie Decker. Uh, seem to be the, the big ones. Haley uh, Deegan racing Kane and West at the moment and a slew of other things. And Natalie Decker, I believe, up at the Truck Series. Yeah, they, um, you know, they both have their talking points for sure. Um, you know, one, like I said, is going to take her time and, you know, is patiently working her way up the field. And one is just let's put it blunt balls to the wall. Whereas you have somebody like Joanna Long, who I personally believe was one of the biggest missed opportunities in NASCAR, who just didn't have the backing and didn't have the best equipment. Whereas now you have these girls coming in, I mean, with just full blown, I mean, ungodly amounts of money behind them, you know, to do everything they possibly can to get pushed in towards the cup series. And, Unfortunately, that's the way it's been for a long time. If you get beyond the local track level or the, the traveling competitive local track level, uh, you got to have some big money behind you. Uh, Haley Deegan, I know for sure does. Uh, her dad and brother, uh, excellent on the uh, the dirt bikes and the uh, the super trucks. So yeah, that, that that's their thing. They got a monster sponsorship. She's got the monster on the hood of the K&N West car. She's winning races out there, too. Uh, you know, following her, it's been a little bit difficult, too. These short tracks, it's bumped to win sometimes. And it, recently there was that article. It's all about, you know, uh, her spinning to win there and some 52-year-old man 
coming over and yelling and cussing at her in her face. Uh, you know, there was a big hula on that. Sure, if I was her father, I'd be like, get the heck away from my daughter. But at the same time, she's got to, you know, take take the, the verbal beating sometime. You know, she's putting herself in a man's world. And I, I hate to put it that way. Even being a female, it, you are. You're putting yourself in, I'm going to say it again, a man's world. I worked at AutoZone for five years, and you have people who are set in their ways who, you know, call to check on a part, and they refuse to talk to a female salesperson because they believe a man should be able to do it. Well, Haley Deacon has been through crew chief after crew chief after crew chief because it seems like she can't find somebody who respects her as a driver saying, hey, it's tight going into the corner, and they're looking at her like a little girl, not as a driver. So... I think she's being, you know, looked at, well, looked over a little more than anything. Yeah, and that, that's Haley Deegan's story, you know, a little bit bumping the wind, uh, a little bit of mixing it up, which is good for her. She's still young, uh, and on that part, um, we'll keep it that way because I'm going to move over to Natalie Decker, and Danica Patrick did, uh, a, uh, I'm going to say it, a spread for SI swimsuit. Now, Natalie Decker is above her years and can do the same thing is that a bad thing though if we're looking to natalie decker and Haley Diggin, do we want you know as a, a sex icon or we got to see them as drivers because like you said in a man's world so to say for these uh female drivers out there you got to get beyond the that that type of uh you know persona and uh, seeing that type of thing from you, you just want to see them in race wear and you know if they're good looking so what but can't they can't they be rated on their race craft rather than their swimsuit? Absolutely. I mean, you hit the nail on the head right there. To me, you have Haley Deegan who wants to be known as a race car driver, whereas you have Natalie Decker who it's look at me, I'm driving a race car. If if that makes any sense. It's more look at me versus perfecting the art of it. I kind of did some digging today and found out there were ties in the family to the Decker and um, Danica Patrick's, you know, side of the family. They actually grew up together in the snowmobile world. That's how Danica Patrick's parents met, and they are longtime family members of the Decker family. But you also got to look at it, too. So, I mean, we talk about the whole man's world and get be, getting beyond that as a female and proving herself. Deegan trying to do that by finding a crew chief that's comfortable with the, the lingo she's using, how to describe her car. Decker already gone over to the little swimsuit side of it. Maybe needs to reel it back, in my opinion, because I'm really rooting for these girls to, to make it big. They got the money behind them. They got the sponsorship. Um, but at the same time, you know, if, if they're not doing anything in the trucks, like right now, I think, uh, Decker's, you know, really struggling, uh, as an income for a truck. Uh, it, she's just I, maybe marketing herself and not in the standards that we would like, but what's available to her. It, like, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's more status look at me than anything. She is a huge YouTube social media sensation. I mean, I'll be blunt. The girl is very pretty. Do not get me wrong. But I think she's overusing that to her advantage. I, I, I'm going to sound really ugly when I say this, but I don't see her as a race car driver. I see her as a whiny baby over the radio. And that's just my opinion. Take it or leave it. But, you know, we hear a lot of crying on the radio. She puts herself in a man's position and somebody spins her out. She goes and rips the guy's hat off and throws it like a two-year-old. That's not professionalism in my eyes, you know, whether it be from a female standpoint or just a viewer. I mean, to me, it's not professional. Yeah, I, definitely on that standard, too, because he, it, it, it was kind of childish to read about that obviously i didn't see it ripping someone's hat off and throwing it on the ground uh what what are you supposed to do if she pushes you or something do you push back uh, boy that that is a slippery slope for the that driver and hopefully he handled that situation pretty well uh to you know the standard of well at least my standard of not hitting a woman so uh 
you got that. It is difficult. Social media with these drivers, it's different. I mean, Natalie Decker has the social media. Haley Deegan's dad follows her around with the YouTube uh, thing. Uh, they go out and film everyday parts of her life for YouTube sometimes. It it could be a little bit uh, different. And I, I just hope these drivers come up, female drivers at least, come up and make it to the big level. I, I want them to see and grow uh, but it may take a little bit extra time. That time may be needed. Uh, so, especially with the, the way the drivers are stacked now, uh, I don't think any of the big teams out there are really budging. And I think um, you need a big team, uh, Hendrick, Gibbs. You, you can't go to a single-car team. Uh, Matt Benedetto is finding that out the hard way, searching a job every season. I don't think... The, the female driver can survive in that aspect without at least a mid to long-term contract. You know, I really don't think they can. And the hardest thing is, you know, finding somebody to respect them, but at the same time, they have to be able to give that same respect back. They have to be able to put in the time, put in the effort, you know, really work for this. I, I don't believe anybody should be handed anything. I think, you know, you really need to work hard at it. And both of them are working hard at it, and they're trying to build that name up. But at the same time, you know, it is. It's just going to take time and getting your name out there, but getting it out there for the right reasons and the right way, going about it the right way, and being known for your driving style. Maybe not necessarily winning, but, you know, getting towards the top, racing clean, having a good season all together. But I really think that's what it's going to take to be able to see a female succeed in the race industry like that. Only time will tell on that aspect. It's a good conversation. I'm glad we've had it. I'm glad Katie was here to have it. So we have the, the you know, the male female perspective. We're so, sort of in line with that. And, uh, but out there on the Facebook comments or YouTube comments, if you want to chime in and say, I'm rooting for this one, or tell me about those F2, F3 drivers or, a female driver I didn't even know about that has a chance coming up. Let let us know. Maybe we uh, reevaluate this opinion later on here on Lugnut TV for the podcast. Uh, but uh, we're approaching the end of the session here. Uh, before we uh, move on to what's going on next week, uh, Katie, any more shenanigans out there on Pit Pass that you plan? Well, Pit Pass is always into something, and I have come to realize that um, we did our – you know, driver spotlight, we went through Cole Cabray, we went to Jeff Merck. I'm in the process of, you know, debating which driver direction we go next. Um, I've dabbled a little bit into the team as to, you know, what makes a group. And I've looked into the sponsorship side. Um, I'm currently working with um, Cape Run Screen Printing and iRacing iFlag. And I'm waiting on the day when our, you know, league guy himself, John, can you know, walk me through a little bit of what it takes to make the league and what makes it successful and what they look for in drivers. So I'm always, you know, trying to go a different angle. Like I said, I want the outside world to see that iRacing is so much more than, I will put it in air quotes here, a video game. Well, let me know when you do get that interview with our leader there, John Hedrick, over the top paints and designs. Obviously, uh, the the mastermind right now behind all of loose lug nuts going on. That is a terribly hard interview to do. Uh, you sign him up, then he disappears. Don't ever pull him up and scare him with an interview. Uh, broadcasters out there because he will not like it and probably won't even talk to you. So th there's that little tidbit. And um, like I said, well, next week we got going on the same thing as always. Tuesday here at Loose Lug Nuts will be our super late models and asphalt. Uh, next week will be Texas, a little bit uh, faster, uh, mile and a half track. Uh, still uh, a little bit difficult to handle out of turn four sometimes. New tire model out there. Uh, we'll we'll get into that discussion next time, uh, maybe with a driver. So uh, we'll see how that goes as the week progresses. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in this evening. Uh, we'll uh, get out there. If you can't contact me during the week of September 11th, it's because I'm in Virginia. Hold on to your questions and maybe uh, interviews that you want to give. Uh, we'll get you on board. But, again, like I said, thanks for everyone tuning in, myself and Katie. 
quite enjoy seeing the reaction from people and what they want to talk about. We'll see everyone next time here at Lugnut TV, and stay safe out there, everyone.